Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail the story of Armenian power. With a long history of war, Armenians have been fleeing their country for decades and relocating to other areas. With the 15-year Lebanese civil war that started in 1975 and the Iranian revolution in 1979, with those two situations, this greatly contributed to the influx of Middle Eastern Armenians to the United States. The wave of newcomers revitalized the Armenian American communities, especially in Los Angeles, where many Armenians settled. In 1970, about 65,000 Armenians resided in Southern California. Two decades later in 1989, the number of Armenian Americans was estimated at 200,000. Armenians would later gain a big presence in areas like East Hollywood, Glendale, Burbank, and they would even have an area in East Hollywood called Little Armenia for the big Armenian culture. But with all the Armenians moving to Los Angeles, the Armenian youth would be heavily influenced by the LA culture. The Armenian power gang is believed to have rised in the early 1990s after an Armenian American gangster named Silent helped co found the gang at 15 years old. He arrived in East Hollywood from Armenia in 1989. Silent encountered larger and more established street gangs that often preyed upon a smaller and more recent group of Armenian immigrants. Silent and his friends formed a defense alliance that grew into the Armenian Power Street Gang. Armenian Power soon evolved into a more complex criminal enterprise. Members of the gang would start asking for protection money from local businesses and eventually forcing the owners to hire private security agencies or seek the help of the city police force. By the mid-1990s, Armenian Power had grown to include more than 200 active members. Being considered small when compared to other groups, the gang still managed to make itself famous. By 1997, police estimated that members of the gang had successfully completed at least 12 killings. Even though Armenian power is a predominantly Armenian gang, they will become aligned to the Mexican Mafia, and they adopted the 13 to their name, which the Mexican Mafia is known for. Even with their connection to the Mexican Mafia, Armenian power had a history of conflict with other Serrano gangs. The other Serrano gangs are also controlled by the Mexican Mafia, but in recent years, their war with other gangs has calmed down. Silent, one of the founders of Armenian Power, was shot to death on May 22, 2000, by a member of the Serrano gang, White Fence. Several deaths will follow, and many innocent people will die. But I can't talk about the gang without talking about past incidents. I know y'all ain't heard this shit in a while, but let's get into some cases. On July 19, 2003, a man named Daniel was operating a drive-thru of a jack-in-the-box in Glendale. A red two-door Honda with three men came to the drive through window, and Daniel would later hear yelling and see three men in the Honda hop out their car. They would then run to a BMW that was in the street, and they would fire multiple shots at the BMW. The car would then drive away. The three men ran back to their Honda, and their car drove away as they fired multiple shots in the air. The two people in the BMW were Armenian, and a group in the Honda were Mexican from West Side Locos. Of uh, the two Armenian people in the BMW, one was shot in the arm, but both survived. Police obtained surveillance videotape from the Jack in the Box drive through window, and from the tape, they got still framed photographs of the Honda and the people inside the car. The shooter Paul could be seen standing outside the passenger side of the Honda holding a gun. The license plate of the Honda was visible in the part of the surveillance tape as well. This will all lead to all the people in the Honda, houses being searched, and also being raided. Edwin, who was the passenger in the back seat of the Honda, identified Jason as the driver of the Honda, and Paul as the front seat passenger who did the shooting. Edwin would tell detectives that the people in the BMW were mugging him and Paul snapped. Paul snapping, it cost him his life, cause the judge snapped the gavel on his ass and gave him 50 years to life. February 14, 2004, around 4 p.m., two men, Karen and another man named David drove to a store called Little Paris, which was in Little Armenia, in Armenian Powers Turf. As Karen was entering the parking lot, a woman in a car was exiting her car. He motioned her to back up so he can enter the parking lot. The woman said something rude to Karen, and Karen said something back. Karen then parked his car. An Armenian man was standing there outside of Little Paris, and another man was nearby. The Armenian man pressed Karen and said, what did you say to the women? Karen replied, I asked him something. The man replied, one of the women is my sister. Do you know who I am? The man then shot Karen in his neck and his knee. Karen would survive, but David later identified the shooter as an Armenian power member. The shooter will later get a life sentence. On January 28, 2006, around 5.30 p.m., 16-year-old Ave was at Connell's restaurant on Washington Boulevard in Pasadena. He was accompanied by several friends who later became victims. 
like Arthur, Hovit, and Armand, and also three other friends. Abe told his friends that he would need them to come with him to back him up. Abe was supposed to meet Scrappy from our median power at Connell's. While they were waiting on the patio, a B&W pulled into a parking lot and four people got out the car. Abe went over and started to talk to Scrappy. One of Scrappy homies punched Abe and this led to a fight. This caused Abe's friends to come out to his aid. But Scrappy whooped out a gun and began firing at Abe and his friends. A video from a restaurant caught the whole incident and was later played for the jury. One victim was shot in the back and the chest. Another victim suffered two gunshot wounds to the chest and a third victim took a bullet to the hip. Abe was not hit. Abe and his group of friends were later testifying on Scrappy and Scrappy received 90 years to life. On June 25th, 2008, Gyro and Joe owned the auto shop at Armenian Powers Turf. They would have multiple problems with the game, with them tagging their walls on their business, so they would report them to the police several times. This will all lead to a group of Armenian Power gang members going to an auto shop to confront them for calling the police. This will all lead to a fight with the Armenian Power side pulling out a gun and shooting Gyro. They shot him multiple times, but this was all recorded on the auto shop surveillance cameras. Three days later, the gang would start terrorizing the auto shop and start robbing the employees. With surveillance footage, Irvin and an accomplice named Edward were received life for the shooting and also another shooting they did months before. A man named Mario was a known drug dealer and he met up with several people that night in order to sell them some drugs. He would get in a car with V and David and sold them heroin, but this didn't go how the way Mario thought it would go. V pulled out a gun on him and shot him several times in the back. Mario survived and later identified V in a photo lineup. V was an Armenian power member and had been robbing other drug dealers. This incident got V life. 2010, an Armenian power member was sent the world in shock after four people were fatally shot and killed and also two wounded outside of a restaurant. This later got him a life sentence. Armenian power status as a highly organized crime group rather than a simple street game became apparent when Armenian American gangsters were found to be involved in a 2010 Medicaid fraud case. On February 16, 2011, the FBI would start Operation Power Outage to bring down Armenian power. Over 900 federal and local law enforcement authorities arrested nearly 100 people allegedly involved in the Armenian organized crime in the Los Angeles area. Much of the crime was white collar in nature, including identity theft, crimes such as credit card scheming, and a range of crimes included kidnapping, fraud, extortion, identity theft, loan sharking, robbery, witness intimidation, drug trafficking, several drug charges from the streets to prison, and also several gun-related offenses and murder. By 2013, a 132 count indictment was filed, alleging suspects used 1,800 stolen identities to file nearly 3,000 fake returns. Prosecutors say the tax fraud scheme allegedly used nearly 2,000 stolen IDs to reap more than 19 million in tax returns, and the Armenian power was all around it. Severely weakened by the outcome of the operations the police used, members of Armenian power scattered and either quitting their criminal careers or just moving back to their country. And by 2019, the other co-founder of Armenian power would receive 32 years for numerous crimes, mainly being bank fraud. Armenian power is still around, but their presence is a lot quieter with the police shutting them down and them remaining under the radar. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.